Hey, what's up? Martin Thoburn here. Today I'm going to be talking about how to map circular LED strips, kind of like this guy right here, using Resolume 5. So, great new feature in Resolume 5 Arena, the ability to map LED strips. Problem is that all the fixtures are designed for this, straight, rectangular, or square grids. So, the challenge is, how do we get Resolume to output a circular animation when the LEDs aren't uh, aren't spaced in a, uh, a straight array. Uh, so I figured out a solution for this problem, so I'll walk you through it. Um, as you can see, I'm able to control the LEDs, strobe them, add colors to them. Now, if you're just doing solid colors, that's not an issue, but if you want to animate anything in a circular loop or have more dynamic patterns or uh, any other kind of wipes or effects, uh, you're going to need to follow the steps that I have in this tutorial. So there's a few things you're going to need in order to get this to work, uh, to work with LEDs and Resolume at all. You're going to need some sort of USB to DMX converter. I'm using the Entech, uh, what is it, the DMX USB Pro MK2. Very great controller. Uh, and that uses DMX cables and sends to the Entech Pixie driver. Um, which allows you to control very common LED strips like the NeoPixels from Adafruit uh, or any other WS2812B style strips. Um, those are the types of LED strips that this, uh, this Pixie driver will control uh, and it accepts the DMX input. All right, let's take a look at my basic setup here. So if I go to the advanced output um, I have a single Lumiverse. Lumiverse is a new type of output in Resolume that allows you to control LEDs as opposed to a screen or projector. And I have a single fixture here, and this fixture is a 16 LED strip. Now, this isn't actually a strip, it's a circular ring. So, what's going on here is the animation above is also being outputted as a straight strip. This is uh, a trick I did in After Effects, but before I go into how I created this, I'll kind of have to show you how you create these fixtures in the first place. And in my preferences, uh, under DMX, I've made sure that my um, Entech USB Pro is set as my output and that it's um, communicating on Lumiverse 1. There's not really any other options there. You could do something with ArtNet, but I'm using the USB to DMX controller. And let me just go ahead and reset all this. I'm going to do this for brand new from the beginning. So I'm going to create a new Lumiverse, Lumiverse 1. Let's create a new fixture. So the way fixtures are created, you're allowed to have the width and the height. And as you can see, here's our problem. I can only get square configurations and I can change how they're ordered. Um, in this case, we're going to want to create 16. This my circle ring has 16. And we're just going to make this one pixel high. All right. Um, and hit close. Oh, yeah, hit close. So here we are. I'm just going to make sure this is set up properly. Now, the first problem I have is the colors don't match. I've got a gradient here. Now if you sort of see what's going on here, I'm able to modify and move this strip. And as I do that, you can see the colors changing. And so you might think, hey, look, it works with circular fixtures. That's great. Well, the problem here is if I have a circular animation, say like this, it doesn't work too well. I can't map the pixels properly. Um, it's only touching one or two of the LEDs and it's not wrapping around in a circle. So the trick we're going to have to deploy is how do we convert a circular animation to a linear bar? And we can do that in After Effects with something called Polar Coordinates. Well, let's actually just go straight into After Effects and I'll show you how to do that. Okay, let's move over to After Effects. All right, first things first, you're going to want to make a brand new composition. And under those settings, uh, for polar coordinates filter to work properly, it's best to have a 2 by 1 aspect ratio here. It doesn't really matter the resolution. Uh, for LEDs, you really don't need high res stuff. So I've gone with 600 by 300 at 30 frames a second uh, and 4 second duration. 
and that's that's sort of what my comp is. I'm going to call this LED here. All right, this is my LED example, and I'm going to go ahead and create a circle shape layer. Uh, easiest way to do that is I'm just going to make sure that I have the ellipse tool selected and double click it. I get a very awkward shape ellipse, but if I go down under the settings under ellipse path. Uh, if I uncheck the uh, constrained proportions here, I'm just going to make this 250 by 250. That sort of feels like um, the size of my LED ring here. Um, the stroke, the 30 width feels feels about right. Uh, and in order to sort of simulate the layout of um, the LEDs to kind of uh, do a test here, I'm going to add some dashes. So as soon as you add dashes, you can kind of dial in. So depending on how many LEDs your um, your circular fixture has, you, you can adjust this. Now, I sort of found that, awkwardly enough, 24.5 is the magic number for me, and that gets me 16 uh, LED strips. Uh, so now I've got these white, white shapes, but in order to kind of see where things are on the spectrum, I'm just going to add some color to this and... Uh, you know, add a gradient. I'm going to add a four color gradient to this. Um, let's see, maybe turn down the blend here, make it a little brighter. Yeah. Yep. Okay. That's looking all right. So now I've got a, a circular color wheel here. It's going to give me a good starting base. Okay, so now here's where the polar coordinates filter comes into play. I'm going to take this layer and pre-compose it, move it into its own composition. I'm going to call this LED ring. All right. And I'm going to duplicate it and hide the original. So none of the work I'm doing here is destructive. Okay, polar coordinates. I select this filter, apply it to my composition here. I've only got two options, uh, interpolation and type of conversion. Rect to polar or you know rectilinear or rectilinear image here or polar to rectangular. So I'm going to select polar to rectangular because I have a circular image and I want to make it a rectangle. I'm just going to dial this in. It's going to warp it into a straight line. Magic. Oh. It just works. So what's really going on here? Let's take a look at some examples. Uh, equal, here's an equal rectangular image. And if I apply a polar coordinates filter to this, and I say rect rectangular here to polar, and I dial this in, it sort of warps the image around into a circle until they both touch ends. And this equal rectangular image is basically a 360 degree panorama, um, 360 by 180. Uh, and, it, and you get this perfectly wrapped image in a sphere. So it converts this rectangle, this equal rectangular image, into a perfect sphere. Now, the same goes the other way. Uh, if you wanted to, um, if you had a circular image like this, and you applied the same effect, which is essentially how we're using the filter, polar to rectangular, and I apply this in, it also does this crazy warping, and you can see all the lines here get straight. So all those crazy curves turn into perfectly straight images. Now this is a square. You'll notice the size of the shapes here are kind of compressed compared to how wide they are here. That's why so it's so important to have your aspect ratio two to one, which is what we did, which creates a perfect image. So now if I turn both of these layers on, since they're both referencing the same composition, uh, whatever I do inside of this composition is going to affect both of these layers, which is great. So I'm going to just increase the size of my comp here, maybe just to 500, just to give me a little more working room so I can sort of tuck that down in the bottom. So this is the basic setup. And this will actually get me started with mapping my LEDs right away. Now, I want to move right into some animation, but... What's really important at this stage of the game is, is to actually export this as a static image for reference. So uh, if you go to under composition, if you go to save frame as, you can save this as a file. Um, under here, it's using Photoshop file, which is frankly fine. Uh, 
We could also do, you know, TIFF or something like that, but let's just go ahead and output this Photoshop file. Let's see how that goes. Ah, there it is. Great. So here we are. I've got uh, this. This is going to serve as a reference. So when I'm going to bring this Photoshop file back into Resolume now, I don't think fo uh, Photoshop is supported in Resolume. So I'm just going to quickly go ahead and uh, export that as a JPEG using Photoshop. There we go. Now I've got my PNG. That's going to serve as my guide here. Cool. All right. So back to After Effects. Let's bring this to life. How can we make this an interesting animation? If I go into the LED ring layer, I'm just going to go ahead and duplicate this and I'm going to call this uh, template and I'm going to call this animated. So I'm going to hide the template and go into the animated version. And the first thing I'm going to do is turn off this dashed line. I don't want the dashed line. I want a solid line so I can kind of see what I'm animating. So, all right. There's a great feature under add here. You go to trim path. This is going to create a very simple animation, but a very dynamic one. This allows you to kind of cut the path off. So I'm going to start by, um, we're going to start at 0%. Go around two, two second point and do 100. I'm also going to keyframe the start point here and go to four and make my end zero and my start 100. So essentially what's happening is we start from nothing. We go all the way on at two seconds and then we reverse. Oh, didn't mean to keyframe that twice. So uh, don't want to keyframe the end there. So I'm going to delete this end point here. So what's happening here is uh, we go all the way on and then wipe off in the opposite direction. And if I go ahead and preview that, that should look kind of cool. And we're good. Okay, there we go. So that looks pretty cool. I like that. Uh, I'm gonna just make this 200% so I see a little better. But I think we can make it a little better, a little more dynamic. So why don't we, first of all, let's take a look at how this actually outputs. So right around the, let's say one second mark, we have a 50% circle. So if I go back to my LED output, you can see this half circle here, and you can see how that's represented in the uh, polar coordinates affected straightened layer. So problem we have right away is, uh, even though this is the start of my animation is green, uh, it's not all the way flush to the left. And that's important because back in Arena, if you look at our LED strip, we're going to want the far left edge here to be the very first the very first uh, LED pixel to light up. So in order to make that happen, to make this easier, I need to have this on the far left edge. And the easiest way to do that is to just rotate. Okay, so if I create, if I hit Command R, create some guides for myself, I'm just going to kind of drop in this 50% mark kind of so I can eyeball this a little better. And I'm going to go down and hit R for rotate and just kind of rotate this to start right here. So now if I go back to my LED layer, you can see I'm starting at the far left edge. This is great. Cool. All right. So in addition to this sort of right on right off effect, I'm also going to keyframe this rotation to start at negative 90. And I'm going to just do one full rotation on that. Let's see how that looks. There. So now it's constantly rotating. I have a constantly cycling, cycling image, and that looks great. Okay. Now, another thing I'm going to do is everything looks better with a little bit of easy ease on it. So I'm just going to select all my keyframes here. Right click, keyframe assistant, easy ease. That way it just starts on, speeds up, and then slows down. Just looks a little more dynamic. All right, let's take a look at how that looks in the LED view. Perfect. This is going to look great. You can see it starts on the far left corner here. Goes all the way around. So right at the two-second mark, we're completely full. 
and then uh, wipes off. So I'm going to go ahead and render this out with the Adobe Media Encoder. Right now it's set up to ProRes. Certainly could choose something um, maybe more VJ appropriate. Um, actually, I find that um, Resolume works really great with ProRes, but if I wanted to really kind of save on file size, I could go for Photo JPEG or better yet, better yet, the DXV3 built in Resolume codec, which is GPU accelerated. Now, to be quite honest, at a uh, 600 by 500 pixel, you're really not going to see much performance bump either way you cut it. Uh, DXV really is. Um, is really great at higher resolution, high def stuff. Um, you know, if you, if you got a photo JPEGs, good old school, safe way to do it. You know, honestly, I've totally VJ'd with ProRes files. They're kind of big and clunky, but um, because every frame is individually keyframe, there's no temporal compression going on. It works quite great, actually. So whatever, let's uh, pump this out. Let's take a look at it. There we are, okay. So going back to Resolume, let's get this mapping set up. So first thing I'm going to do is actually just, you know, maybe I'll keep this composition. All right, so I'm going to bring in that PNG as my reference layer, and then I'm going to bring in my LED movie. So here we have the animated version, and we already see some stuff happening here. And this is um, this is my template, and you can see I'm not quite lined up. So let's go check out what's going on here. All right. So as you can see, I want to make sure that I start on channel one. This is the only LED strip I've got controlled. So I start on channel one, and if I do this new fixture here, this is the new one I set up. Uh, I want to line it up and stretch it out to fit the full frame here, and you'll see once all of these light up I'll know that I've hit the mark you can see right there that um, all my LED all my LED rings have lit up and if I move this down down here they'll go away move it up They're all lighting up so that looks great um, let's go into the fixture settings now there's a couple problems going on let me just play back. So this this looks right. Now, if you'll notice closely, we start with yellow and go to green. And on my uh, LED here, uh, this is blue to green to red to purple. So my colors are all messed up. Why is this? Well, this actually has to do with that my LEDs aren't set up for RGB color. So if I go into the fixture settings here, easy way, default is RGB. For whatever reason, these Adafruit nanopixels are I believe BRG and if I do that you can see now I have pink blue green yellow in the right order uh, and I'm gonna save and close this and then I'm going to uh, run that new render that we have here okay first thing I notice it's going backwards so another thing I need to set up in the advanced output in the fixture settings is making sure the direction the orientation of um, how these uh, the direction of these pixels is not left to right, but right to left. And once I switch in here in Resolume, boom, I've got the orientation correct uh, and everything's lining up great. Now I've noticed when I started actually synchronizing this to music, there's about 180 millisecond lag between the video and the actual LED output. Um, however, that's quite easy to correct for. So if you're ever trying to combine this with beats, uh, or do some sound synchronization stuff in Resolume. It's actually really easy in the preference under audio output to just line up your master output to, to match. So don't get discouraged if these um, USB to DMX controllers, by the time all the processing's done, actually gets to the driver and outputs outputs the data to the, to the LED. Uh, quite a lot of time can pass. So don't get discouraged about that. Um, really easy fix. So now, go ahead, have fun. Uh, create all kinds of fun, crazy visuals with this. It's, it's really an amazing 
amazing program. I can't speak highly enough about Resolume. It's just blowing my mind. I love these new LED features. I'd love to see uh, an actual circular fixture built into the program so I don't have to do this wild workaround. But I hope you find this helpful. Uh, and uh, leave some comments. Let me know uh, it, how, how you guys are using this. Send me some examples. Uh, do you have ways to improve on the workflow? I'd love to hear it. Okay. Cheers, guys. Over and out.